I'll tell you when things started getting bad. It was when they got rid of Toys R Us. No, because I got kids now and there's nothing like that, right? You take them to, what do you take them to? Target, Walmart. They got a few aisles with some toys. I mean, do you remember when Toys R Us had stock? Just things piled up to the ceiling. There's a lot of variety. I mean, it was a whole big store and I, I that's when things got worse. I'm just saying in the world, things got worse when they got rid of Toys R Us, you know. Steve Warner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to take a look at the new uh, Microsoft Connected Cache standalone server to help with uh, Intune delivery optimization, with apps and updates, and just all that fun stuff. It's Jeffrey. Bring Jeffrey back, right? We always want to be Toys R Us kids. I'm telling you. Get Rubix, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so we know what delivery optimization is and how when you push things over the internet from Intune to devices, you can like kind of peer them off of each other, things of that nature, um, you know, to save the bandwidth. But one concept has always been if you had a system center, configuration manager, whatever you want to call it, you can uh, use those servers as what they call connected cache to kind of uh, keep everything downloaded from the internet once and then from one local point distribute it. Well, now they have a Microsoft connected cache for enterprise and education, and this is new and it's in preview. I mean, of course it's in preview. And let's uh, take a look at the official thing instead of me trying to explain it. So it is a software only caching solution that delivers Microsoft content within enterprise and education networks. And it can be managed from the Azure portal. It can be managed from the Azure portal or the CLI. Um, it can be deployed to as many devices, Linux devices, or VMs as needed. It can be configured to download cloud content from a connected cache server. Oh wait, Microsoft Windows can be configured. Uh, yeah, so it can pull from this server um, using Intune. Basically, is what it is. Do they have any architecture about it? Yeah, this was what I was talking about. We're used to be able to do with Config Man. I think you still can. Um, but basically, okay, so it runs on WSL, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux, and a group managed service account, local user account, domain account. Okay, we're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna kind of wing it here. Uh, supported scenarios, right? It's intended to support the following delivery situations. So pre-provisioning, that's pretty good. Anything with Windows Autopilot, co-managed clients, cloud-only managed devices, Intune enrolled without the Config Man client that get monthly updates on Win32 apps. So this is perfect, right? Um, large enterprises. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, and then there's a bunch of technical stuff about the speed. Obviously I'll put the link to this below. So if you don't want to be a degenerate like me and actually read the instructions, you can read the instructions, but let's set this thing up. All right. So to get started, we're going to go to our Azure portal. You'll need a pay as you go subscription. They do state some stuff in the docs about the, about the price and the cost. It's like, two gig payload, uh, you can download. So for 35,000 devices, downloading a two gig payload in 24 hour time frame at a sustained rate of six. I, I don't know what that means. Like I said, I'll put the docs, you read it. You need an Azure subscription. So in here, we're gonna just look for it. Microsoft connected, there it is. Connected cache for, that's not what I want. Connected cache for enterprise and education. Okay, here we go. So we're going to hit create. All right, let's make a new resource group for this. Okay, let's do. Uh, I'm going to create a new resource group called RSG. I'll put MCC for Microsoft Connected Cache 001. Definitely want a good naming schema for your stuff, but that's a whole other uh, and it looks like location. All right, we don't have a lot of options, probably because it's still in preview. I'll leave it West US, it's close enough. Uh, choose a name for your connected cache. Keep trying in the future. We're gonna call this Rubix cache. Can I have underscore? I can, perfect. Review and create. All right, now it's validating. That part was easy enough. All right, validated, uh, let's create. I thought that was creating, but I guess it just validated. You validate and then create validate and create okay now this is our standard deployment and progress screen so just let that go okay so it's all set up right so let's go to the resource and look at it because okay cool so the idea here is that 
this isn't actually going to do the caching. This is going to manage it. And we can uh, connect local nodes or local servers to this, right? So I'm going to uh, configure this with a server here in, in, in the studio. And if you have different branches and different office locations, you can connect uh, many different nodes, right? So, so that you're kind of distributing across wherever your devices are. Okay, so how do we add a node? So down here is cache node management, and we're going to get a cache nodes. Oh, perfect. Create cache node. Let's call it home server two, specify OS, Windows, cool. Uh, we're going to create. So th that would probably be the time to, to name it um, what you're using it for. So like, you know, New York office node one new, uh, you know, West Hollywood office. You know, I'm thinking the names here, but that's essentially what it, what it is. All right. So there's our node notice it's not configured. So let's click on it. Okay. So this is the server I'm going to be using. This is a literally a, a windows server sitting down here and this is what we're ultimately going to connect so when i flip back here uh we choose the windows operating system that's what we're going to do um it's going to create this folder for us now we have to tell it how much space it can use for the cache because you gotta remember this is going to be pulling down updates and apps from the internet for us to then disperse to the intune machine so let me go back to that server real quick and let's see what i'm working with here my drive is I have a terabyte um, free. Uh, maybe I don't want to use all that. So why don't we do this? Let's let's say let's say 250 gigs for cash. I think that's a good size. 250 gig. Um, obviously, you can go bigger if you have more content and if you have more storage space. Um, check the box and then connect to the proxy. I don't have a proxy, so we're good there. I don't need to worry about that. Um, Okay, now we move to provisioning tab. Command generation and progress, please check back later. Okay, so it's gonna generate that command for me. So let me wait until it does that. So while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna create a new local user to be the connected cache user in this case, just to keep things nice and clean. Uh, so new user will be called MCC. Um, password will be, oh, not telling you. Password never expires. Let's create that. And let's put that user in the local admins group of the server. So we're going to add MCC. Perfect. All right. Done. Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to download this provisioning package. And I'm going to get that over to my server. Actually, it would probably make sense if we did this from the server. Okay, change of plans. We are going to log into the Azure portal from the server and grab the package there. Uh, Rubix cache, node management, cache node. All right, it's got my node. It looks like it's still up oh, and there's my script. So that gave it the time it needed. Cool. Let's go ahead and download the provisioning package. Okay, so with that there, let's extract it. Why don't we just, put, I'm just gonna put this in a folder in C to make my life easier. Obviously put it somewhere you want. And then we're gonna get into some PowerShell activity. Okay, so it's a bunch of stuff in there. Okay, so we have that extracted. So we're gonna copy this command and I'm gonna open ICE. Um, it's just gonna make this a little bit easier. Run as administrator. Okay, let me zoom that a little bit so we can all see. And I'll paste this in. Okay, so we need some variables first. So let's navigate to that folder. Uh, we're going to go CD, C. All right, so we're in the folder. It looks like it's going to run that provisioning command from inside. Provisioning. Yep, it's that one right there. All right, so let's set some variables first. We are going to need the user variable. And that is going to be the user we just created. So because it's local, it's going to be GMK02 backslash MCC. Okay, now we are going to need a, um, a PS credential object uh, for this because we need to capture the, yeah, my local account credential. So let's make that variable up here. My local account credential. All right, so in order to do that, we are going to do 
Uh, PS credential, not PS credential, new. And we're gonna do the username and the password. Actually, the password we're gonna have to do is a secure string. So let's do that. So we'll do convert to secure string. Uh, I'll pretend this is my password. It has plain text, force. Um, now that'll be the password there. So let's see if this does what we want it to do. So if I do my local username secure string. Okay, so that should be good to create the local credential. And the last thing is there's gonna need to be some policy to allow a local user to run, to log on as a batch job. All right, so in order to set that policy, let's do a GP edit, edit group policy. And obviously you can do this through the domain controller too. Um, this is gonna be under computer configuration, uh, Windows settings. It's a security setting. Uh, it'll be local policies. Let me expand this because now it's hard to see. And it'll be uh, user right assignment. Allow log on as a batch job. So administrators, backup operators. Okay, so we're all set. You just got to make sure that that's enabled. Yep, and we're good. Okay, let's uh, run the rest of this here. Oh, system management run, so MSC can only run when there's no pending reboot. Please reboot and rerun the installation. Ah, oh, man. Okay, so the server is back up. We're gonna run ICE again, and hopefully it saved our code because I just realized I messed up. Oh, and it did, that's great. All right, let's try to run this one more time. Oh. Did not detect a valence up to it, so please ensure WSL. Okay, so we do need Windows subsystem uh, for Linux, which is funny because I said that earlier and I didn't do it myself, so let's do that now. Okay, that should be a simple command, which is just WSL install. We're getting so close. I just want some connected cache. Okay, it's been installed, and I'm going to try this one more time. We got it. Yay. Right, so what does this mean though, now that it's here? Okay, so, um, oh. Oh, it's still the execution task. Okay, cool. Okay, it looks like it's executing a task to try and start. It's doing a whole thing here. Uh, all right, so I needed one more reboot to, I guess, finish downloading the Linux image. In this case, it's Ubuntu. So after that's done, we're gonna run the task one more time. These are things that will ultimately be in the documentation, hopefully once it gets further along in the preview. But for now, you're gonna have to make, make do with me here. Okay, so that's done. I'm gonna leave that for a second and we're gonna try this again, hopefully one more time. Oh, look, we got Ubuntu and everything in here. All right, and it looks like it finally settled. So let's go back here and refresh. And it looks like we have a healthy node. All right, so now that that's healthy, um, all you would have left to do is your Intune delivery optimization policy. And that doesn't change. That's the same as it's always been. You just make one to point to the connected cache. So, all right. All right, so we're not done here. What's gonna be next for us is uh, we're gonna actually put this into practice. We're gonna push the policy. We're gonna uh, give it some time for devices to get content through this. And uh, you know we'll be able to come back here and hopefully take a look at the reports and see how it did. But at least in terms of you know the preview is fairly new. So to get going with this, um, yeah, hopefully this will get you to at least have the cache set up. And it doesn't have to be Windows. You can do a Linux machine as well, I believe. But like I said, the link is going to be below to get all that information. Let me know how you did. We'll be seeing you.